kind of took today off. I drove home today and um, didn't do a whole lot of thinking, and um, I'll be back at it tomorrow. But I would say by the first of the week, I'm heading back up to Wally's place, and so um, gonna gonna put all things on paper and get it done, get it in the mail. Okay, fabulous. And then when I know what I know, uh, then uh, that'll be shared. Yeah, and I understand that too, because I'm I'm experiencing that with what I've spoken to here. You know, as I've told you before, they keep saying, "Well, how's it going? How's it going?" And um, I'll say, as soon as as soon as I know for sure, I'll let you know. But <laughs> you know, every time you, you meet up with them, it's, "Well, how's it going?" And uh, oh, we're you know, we're getting closer. And well, you know, it's interesting, too, uh, when you guys met with that lawyer, that the only thing he didn't talk about was that one paragraph on that piece of paper I gave you guys that was talking about a possible trust. Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's what I noticed. He didn't. And he, he almost steered right away from that. He agreed, uh, with everything. he agreed with everything that we proposed there, but he, uh, he didn't touch that aspect of it. For, for some reason, I'm not saying it was intentional or not. Maybe it was. Uh, maybe he knows something and uh, he didn't want to go there because at the end of the day, and let's bear this in mind, that in the Financial Administration Act, the government is under no obligation to expose the existence of a trust. Exactly. And I think even if he did know it, um, I don't think he felt that there was anything that he could do uh, because I think he's um, a labor lawyer. Yep. Not sure, anyway, like, I don't like know if a lawyer can just do whatever in any Yeah. Yep, so I'd like to move on, Dana, and take some questions from others now and just okay. move on with the question and answer thing and well, if there is any or any. Good talking to you, we'll talk soon. Yep. Take care, Dana. Love you. I love you too. Bye everybody. Bye, Dana. Bye, Dad. Any questions, folks? Uh, Vic, I just got a comment. Go ahead, Spaghetti. Um, what you just said tonight uh, goes in line with uh, Andrew's letter. He's basically got a letter from the RG basically saying that the rights in the name are not owned. So that makes perfect sense. Yeah, well, that's the thing. If, if they're not owned, then they can only be one thing in trust. That's right. <laughs> you know, it's like I, I could have your TV over here, but I don't own it, right? See, we were wondering what the hell that meant for years, and now and now it came out. So now if, if anybody understands what that meant, then now you know. Yep, and we've resisted that by saying, well, you own the name. They say we don't own it, but we then rewrite letters and say you do. <laughs> it's craziness when you start thinking about it. You just ponder that. I find it interesting, too, that almost every letter that Judy sends ends with the same thing, that, that the government is committed to service excellence in serving the people of Ontario. It's like she's kind of telling us there in one, sent, one paragraph, you may use it to serve yourself. However, the government is really striving to serve you. <laughs> but it can't serve us if we don't serve the trust. Right. And that's why, like I say, Judy would say, we're not responsible for your debts because they don't have anything in front of their face that suggests that we've uh, we've agreed to settle these things into the trust. Yes. And so it's all operating on the presumption, as, as I say, that we're all doing it for self. And uh, in fact, the world was created on by the ego, which is all self-serving. And you start to see out there too that you know man keeps trying to fix things, but he just makes it worse. He fixes one thing and creates 15 other problems. And uh, just instead of just, you know what, God's all done everything perfectly. I just need to sit back and go for the ride. <laughs> Whatever will be, will be. Thanks for your comments, sir, Ange. You're welcome. Thank Ange. She's the one that's got the letter. Yeah, there's a few of them. I've seen several of them, and they all they all end the same with that exact same paragraph at the ending there. And uh, the other statements are pretty much the same as well. Depends on the questions asked, but she generally answers the same. Any other questions? Well, that's easy. <laughs> so if there's no questions, I'm uh, gathering that we're finished then. And uh, we'll carry on and uh, see what happens in the Thanks, future. Yeah. In the coming days. And Hello, is, Vic. Yep. Hi, this is Stephen, Connecticut. Hey, how you doing? Um, I'm very well listening to you and uh, grateful I got on a little bit later than planned. But I just first want to let you know, I just I love you, man to man, brother to brother. I'm appreciating your <clears throat> pathfinding. My voice is a little crunchy right now. I've got some little bug I'm dealing with. <laughs> um, so. 
first of all, that from my heart to your heart, thank you for your um, your pathfinding, for, for giving me a new way of looking at these words and this situation and, and clearing up some of the fog in my own programming. And um, so I'm, I'm deeply grateful around that. Um, I'm in a situation similar to what you mentioned about um, being at that point where where you, you don't have any of those things and just get to face the uh, the emptiness uh, and and um, with the doors doors opening from there and um, the, the one thing I wanted to share is that in the other morning I was I was doing my meditation walk and uh, I kneeled over at one point and I saw all these beautiful uh, little uh, water drops on the grass. And um, what that meant to me at that moment is that grace is everywhere. Grace is everywhere. And I feel like that's it's exactly what you're saying and trusting this grace. And um, so for for things being taken away from me, it's, it's been the, in a way, the delivery or the opening to trusting this grace. And now I'm hearing these words about the trust and the settler and the beneficiary, and, and I need to, with that spirit of, of grace, let the fog clear in my own thoughts and, and programming, really understand that I have been my own worst enemy, and that, um, that by by affirming this, this love for you and, and this, this passion to, to get this right, to understand what's what's true and real, that um, that this will come quickly, and it feels like this community effort is um, essential in this process. And, and I'm grateful to be in touch with you. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for your kind words, and I love you. <laughs> it has been quite a journey, I think, for a lot of people, and, um, and uh, just just willing to let go, and you know. Myself, uh, several years ago, went through all the death collector and the death phone calls and all of this stuff, and you know, waking up sweating and blah blah yep. blah blah blah. And eventually, you just get over that and start to have fun with it because yeah. you realize, you know what, it's I'm alive and <laughs> that's good enough. Right. And just letting go of these things that are, you know, the baggage, the anchors, whatever we want to call them. And uh, but it is, it is amazing when we start paying attention to nature and just take a moment and, and, and be with it. Yeah. The feelings that can come from it is incredible. And the, the love and the freedom and the feeling of freedom and uh, it's all right there in front of us if we just partake in it that way. You know, the grass doesn't care if it's warm or cold today. That seed's going to grow in the grass come hell or high water. And if there's a rock there, it'll go around it. <laughs> it's not going to go back underground saying it's too cold today or there's something in my way. It just does what it does and no fear. Or it's, uh, that place is nature. I, I find for myself anyhow to uh, clear myself of trash. I really appreciate the time out in it. That's why I'd like to live in the middle of it, 24-7. And thanks very much uh, for in Connecticut, eh? That's a long way away. Just around the corner. Yeah, I guess so. I'm, I'm hearing that you are um, preparing to write some letters, and um, when I look at my California birth certificate and um, start allowing the... Uh, <clears throat> the uh, scales to come off my eyes and just look at it freshly, um, then I I am able to put it together with um, what I'm hearing in terms of those those words. I realize for myself that I need some tangible ways of um, picking those, um, wearing those words. So I'm going to, it doesn't work for me just to write it down ten times. I'm aware that I have to walk with it, you know. <laughs> Maybe walk on the green grass with my bare feet until those 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 terms have a have a clear understanding and meaning, and um, and so the the idea of writing to somebody when I'm aware that I charge something or when I put my signature and um, I feel all of these things in flux as I'm being reduced to the uh, essential value the real gold of, of love and um, and uh, I guess be humble enough to be shown that I don't I thought I knew things and I and, and, and so now there I feel a humility to just be say 
I don't understand this. I want to understand this. Please show me this. And that moment what on the ground... What don't you fucking understand? Hello? Some joker on the line. Huh. We get we get them from time to time. Uh-huh. That's okay. I like and, jokers. And um, <laughs> there's a big difference for me between speaking heart to heart and feeling that resonance and that, that meeting like I do right now with I you. I have a question. Go ahead. Yeah. I, uh, hi, Vic. It's Greg from uh, Vancouver. I'm, I'm wondering if you ever, if you have written to uh, the Vital Statistics Agency. Um, I know you were talking about it before. If, if, it, if you did that or if that's what you plan on doing. Or. Well, I sent a bunch of letters off uh, about a week and a half ago, and um, to be honest with you, they were, they were. If I was throwing the darts at the dartboard, they didn't hit the center. They hit just outside the center. But I can see where I, where I failed, and I, I didn't indicate my capacity properly. I didn't put things in perspective in that sense. So, and, and those letters uh, went to the Registrar General and uh, and uh, Minister of Finance. Provincially, you mean? Yep. Yeah. yeah. One thing uh, that the lawyer agreed is that it's definitely a provincial situation. See, the provinces by constitution are responsible for property, so that's kind of telling you right there who's holding things in trust. And the provinces maintain their sovereignty independent of the Fed. The only thing that the Fed has is the money, so they kind of have a bit of a noose around the provinces neck. So, you know, if you want some money, you got to do what we say. But at the end of the day, it's the, it's the provinces that are uh, holding these properties in trust, and it's the provinces that hire the police and create the police forces to, uh, to serve and protect. And they're really uh, protecting the trust property. They're protecting us from each other, and then they're protecting assets. So I'm, I'm curious in your view, do you like sometimes it boggles my mind. Like, is each province a a trust in itself, or is it Canada the one giant trust, or is it all of the above? Well, I really can't answer that. How I kind of looked at it is uh, for years now is that the father is the Fed, and the provinces yeah. are the mother. And because generally it's the father that goes to work, or from history anyhow, it's the father that goes to work and gets the money, and the Fed is responsible for money, and the, and the provinces and the mothers are responsible for bearing children, which is, you know, property, chattels, cattle, whatever. And so I, I can't say for sure, um, but, uh, well, basically what the lawyer said, he says, and which is what Neo did, he says, go to the source. <laughs> And we're talking we're talking registration of birth and birth certificate here is the first thing we got, so that should give you a pretty good heads up who the source is. Now, I'm not saying that that's the party that's going to do things, but um, I think the key, the critical aspect here is to get your get your capacity on the table and just send it in there. Don't you know you don't send it to some place where it wouldn't make sense to send it, but um, if, uh, if it's not the registrar, then it's uh, they they should get it to the right place. In, in Ontario, the registrar has two capacities. He's the Minister of Finance and the registrar, so he's, uh, he's registration, re registering information in the computer in one sense, and there's a program within the computer in another sense. So it's kind of like a dual role there. And uh, I'm not saying that that's a, that's a choice either, but there's nothing to stop anyone from for presenting this to a lawyer and saying, here, here's the, here's the situation, here's what I think is going on, and uh, check it out. I'm, I'm re personally, I'm reluctant to do that. I just, for some reason, I just have glitches in talking to lawyers. But <laughs> yeah, I, I, tr I talked to a trust lawyer. It must have been four or five years ago, and you know, and and he, <laughs> you know, he, he he just wasn't interested in going. Any, and he started going on about, oh, he has no problem with, you know, if his body, his property is of the queen, and I just reacted to that so badly. And, but he might have. Been on to, he might have kind of been playing with him a bit there. Well, he might have been also helping you. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. You know, quite often I think we uh, we're there, there's when we get something they're actually trying to help us out, but because we're coming from these negative perspectives, we don't see it that way. Yeah. I, I've taken my foot out of my, out of my mouth many times during my life, so. <laughs> And again, after having done that awareness test that uh, we shared there back in February, I think, and uh, I don't know anyone that uh, saw the muggy bear going through the crowd until it was pointed out that it was there. So that just showed to me right then and there that although my eyes see, they don't see everything. So who the heck am I to say I saw what I saw or that I know anything, that I know everything? 
it caused me to reevaluate and, re and realize, well, geez, if I didn't see that which was right in front of my face, what the heck, heck else am I not seeing that's right in front of my face? 